I think if you blacked out that uh, the Seat badge on there as well, what an absolute whip that would be. So next we're gonna go on talk about these two GTIs here. Ooh. Oh dear me. Hi, it's Dave, it's Dave Elise, and welcome to the July edition of our PDI tour. We turn up to our PDI centre here, where the cars are all prepped and getting ready to go out to customers. We take a walk around, see what cars are here, chat about them, see what we like, what we don't like, and that's kind of it really, nice and simple. And we'll start with an absolute banger. This Persia, no, I'm not joking. This Seat Leon Cupra, or a Cupra Leon, I forget what they call it now, they've mixed it all up. You know what I mean, looks absolutely gorgeous. Bit of a stealth car actually. I think if you blacked out that, uh, the Seat badge on there as well, what an absolute whip that would be. Let's take a closer look around it and then we'll have a chat about it. What's interesting on this car, and I don't, I might be going absolutely bananas, but I don't recall ever seeing a Cupra with the Cupra uh, right in here blacked out like this. So unless this is a new version, and I'm just losing the plot, or this, is, this car has been uh, retrofitted with this, we'll have to find out. Hmm. Looks really nice though, and like I say, if the front badge was done in that style, we've got black alloys as well. Really nice looking car, love this car. Full leather on the interior. The only thing that lets it down for me is, um, it's just like the media centre there. Just looks a little bit dated. I'm more than happy to forgive that. More than happy. What else have we got? So right next to it is this VW E-Golf. You don't see many of these cars. The production's really slow on these uh, electric Golf. So this is basically, if you're not sure what this is, this is the 100% electric VW Golf. It's got a range of about 120 miles, which is it's not great to be honest with you, but this is like, VW's probably their but I think it is their first like 100% electric car they produce. Obviously now you've got the Audi e-tron which we've done a video on. Link that up there. Take a look at that. But yeah, this is Volkswagen's first one. It's been out for a good few years now. But you just don't see many of them because like I said, they don't produce a lot of them. They're just really expensive as well. I mean to get an electric golf over a normal golf, you're paying a premium for that, probably something like £150 a month. Uh, in some cases, most people aren't going to do that. You know, why would you pay an extra £150 a month to make a, a bit of a fuel saving that the maths don't add up? Even if you're a company car driver, the maths don't really, don't really work. So you need to get that price point much further down, much closer to a standard petrol or diesel before that's going to get adopted. But nonetheless, it's a sign. That's where the marketplace is going. It's good that VW are in there and they're, um, they're getting involved. So let's again, let's take a close look at this car and let us know what you think. So the interior is really nice on this car. It's got a flat bottom steering wheel. Um, and again, if we're talking about um, the media console here, if you look at the Golf, on this, this E-Golf here, compared to the Leon, you'll see what I mean about that one looking just a little bit dated and needs to be brought up to well, this sort of standard, really. Sooner rather than later, please say that. So next up we've got this Audi A7 S line in deep black. So we drove one of these and did uh, a full series of videos on, on the A7 just a couple of weeks ago. We'll link up some of those videos up there. Really nice car. Doesn't get a lot of good press, I'd say, within like sort of the consumer group. It's a really nice car, as I said in the video. Really nice to drive, really comfortable. Tech on it is like, you know, right at the high ends. Just not particularly exciting to drive which is why a lot of people don't like it for me if you're doing any sort of serious miles especially sort of motorway miles don't want to look too far beyond this car that or something like an Arteon just really nice cars to drive sort of long distance motorway miles things like that beautiful car to do it if you want to be throwing it around country lanes that sort of thing flying away at lights probably not the car for you and again let us know what you think of this car in that comment section below 
So as we said before, one of the best things about doing these PDI tours is that because there's a mix of cars, you'll find, like we've done before, what was there, a Q3 and an Ateco, I think it was last time. That's correct. So you get a bit of a mix of these models where it's like basically comparison of the two. And we've got something similar again here today where we've got the Tiguan and the t rock So it's just great to see, be able to put the two side by side so you can see the difference between them size-wise and things like that, which you wouldn't normally be able to do. So just one of the beauties of coming here. So we've got the VW T-Rock here, and this is the Tiguan. And you can really see the size difference between the two when they're separate. So if you just looked at a T-Rock and then a Tiguan a bit down the road, it's hard to sort of like gauge the difference in size, whereas you really can see a noticeable difference between the two where they're side by side like they are here. A lot bigger that Tiguan, a lot, lot bigger. So again, let's take a close look at them. I mean, let's be good if we can get in, hopefully you can get in the boot of these two cars, because that's one of the big things when you're looking at SUVs, is obviously boot space, something you need to take into account. Hopefully you can get in the boot of these two, open both up at the same time and see the size difference. Let's do it. Let's do it. One. Oof. Okay, we have a comparison situation going on here. So, let's use a standard floor. It's not getting all professional, isn't it? It is. Jesus. Front one, just to give you a bit of a gate. Can you probably can't see it. Can, can you see that? Yeah, we can. Yeah. So it's a decent sized boot. Not like crazy, but definitely gonna get your shopping bits and pieces in there and then you can also see so you can drop that you can drop that down to get some real depth in there as well so actually once you do that there's a real decent decent boot space in there I mean really you'd have it like that all the time I think so yeah I mean what else have we got a bit of strapping so you've got four points here where you can you can fix things too. So I mean nothing worse than like there's nothing worse than your shopping and anything you got just flying around your boot. It just maybe it's me. So things like these little strapping hooks here, um, really handy to use. So let's take a look at the Tiguan in comparison. Yeah, so there's good. What's that? 12 inches. Something like that. <laughs> um, so there's, a, there's a noticeable difference in the in the length, uh, the boots between the two, and um, also one if the Tiguan. If you can also see now with the Tiguan, um, both the cars have got a um, space saver spare wheel in there, which is really good to have. A lot of customers really like that. But with the Tiguan, you can't drop the boot down any further. So although you're getting a bit more length, haven't quite got the depth. So not a lot in it really when you look at that yeah, way. I would have thought there'd been a, a more of a difference, a bigger difference between the Tiguan and the t rock boot space. But there's really not that much in it. So we've got three more cars I think we're gonna check out in this delivery bay. What do you want? GTI or the A4 event? Let's go the A4. Let's go the A4. Okay, so this car here has been so popular recently. I basically killed the supply of A4 Vance in the last couple of weeks with the offers that we've had out on um, on these cars. One thing this car looks like it is missing though, which I do like, but it's the technology pack, which gives you the, uh, the virtual cockpit. A lot of people think it's a bit gimmicky, but I really like the virtual cockpit personally. It's not a lot more to upgrade to that, although it's quite an expensive option. It does enhance the resid residual value of these cars, so it mainly adds about 15 pounds a month to them so for 15 quid to get the upgraded navigation system the virtual cockpit the wireless phone charging things like that i think it's an absolute bargain so i probably would have gone for that if i had the choice but i wouldn't be disappointed with this car at all no chance before we move on you know what bugs me about the black edition Go on. with the audi range is that they still have the s-line badges on them so i think they should just like take them off and really give the black edition ident uh, its own identity because if you didn't know about the car you look at that and it's an s-line really it's a black edition but it's got the s-line badge on it i know the s-line the black edition is an s-line with the black edition pack on it but let's well, give it its own identity 
So next we're going to go on and talk about these two GTIs here. Um, and again, like I said about um, a couple of minutes ago about um, walking around and you get to see cars sat side by side and you can really sort of you know, have a good comparison. And well, this is a great opportunity to look at the two different colours. Um, so you've got two GTIs, both five doors. And the difference is one has got the Atlantic blue metallic paint, which is 675 quid, something like that. And this is a uh, Tornado Red, which I think is £375 special solid paint it's very confusing they do keep changing it the manufacturers so you know white's free then it's not and then red's free then it's not and who knows by the time watching this video it might be two grand <laughs> who knows but the point is it's just comparing the colors so atlantic blue tornado red now i'm starting i like I don't normally like red cars, but there's a couple of cars I do like it in. And bizarrely, I said it, I like that A7 in Tango Reds, which I think you could ever say. Because it's always been the smaller cars which I've, I've liked in red. I like the GTI. I've always liked the GTI in, in red. I think it just suits the car really nice, quite a vibrant colour for the sporty type of car that it is. And looking at the, comparing the two side by side, for me, there's only one winner here. And it is the red car, it's got me the tornado red. It's a little bit too dull that, and this, bear in mind, we're under bright lights here, and that paint just looks a little bit flat compared to the, the tornado red. I would definitely go for tornado red, save myself a few quid in the process, but what do you think? Drop a comment below, tell us which colour you go for, or there's another colour in the GTI range, and if you don't know what the colours are available, We've got you covered because we have wrote an article with the different colours that are available in the GTI range and we'll, we'll put it in the description. We'll put that in the description, you can go and have a look at that if you're not sure what the colours are. Which one would you go for, Connor? I think Tornado Red, personally. Mm. It's weird considering I'm a red and you're a blue, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I don't really... <laughs> I know, listen, I'm a football fan and I support Manchester City. Come on, the city. But Six times. I'm, I'm not that bothered where they go, I wouldn't have a car because it's red and that's like the arch enemy's colour just like I guess I'm not 14 Connor <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the difference there so moving out of the delivery bay now into this, the sort of general storage compound so these cars what you're going to see here a lot of these cars have got covers on them or like the protective packaging that comes from the factory to keep us safe in transit as well so just bear that in mind they're not got a lot of two-tone cars knocking about they are all nice and uh, safe with that packaging on, that's why it's there. With the A7. It's one in Firmament Firmin Firmin Blue. It's Firmament Blue, isn't it, yeah? It is, the um, same one we had. Yeah, I said in the video when we had this car for a good few hours and we did a review on it, we did a walk around um, and we did a test drive on it. Um, so we spent a good few hours with this, this car and I've not seen the Firmament Blue before. So I was really quite interested to see what it would look like uh, in the flesh under sort of natural lighting and stuff like that and I was just not impressed with it in the slightest way. I'm not changed my mind, it just doesn't really do anything for the car, it doesn't it's just a bit flat and dull for me. Really like I said I had you know Tango Red, you know, I'd be taking it to Tango Red just to sort of try and give it a little bit. I mean maybe because of the car itself, like like I said earlier on in the video, it's like the A7 isn't that exciting to look at. You know, it's uh, it's a good car. I like the car to drive. It's just not particularly exciting. So maybe that's why I'm going for the red to give try and give it a bit of oomph. I'm not a big fan of Firmament Blue. So let's move on. So we saw a minute ago the A4 Avant Black Edition. Now we've got the Saloon and version of this car. Really nice car. What I'm seeing, um, and it'd be interesting to sort of gauge what sort of the uh, the viewers think actually is that it feels like customers are now um, are more edging towards advanced like estate vehicles basically so if you had the choice between a saloon and an estate it feels like the majority of customers would prefer estate now over the saloon I think it's just down to practicality you know it's just you can get a lot more done with an estate than you can a saloon and that sort of because the cars look so good anyway it doesn't really they're not going for a saloon because it looks a little bit more sporty because the estates look so so good um, and it might be something to do with the emergence of 
SUVs. Three years ago, there wasn't as many SUVs on the market as there is now, and that is that, that's all the rage at the moment. Most customers want SUVs, they want to be raised slightly. They don't want a big car, they don't like a Giant's car, like a Touareg or a Q7. They still want like a golf-sized vehicle, but they want to be slightly raised. And I guess it's just, maybe it's sort of bearing fruit from that, why like more customers now rather would rather go for an estate than a saloon. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Fair enough. So here's a cool little car that I really like. I think it's really uh, underappreciated. It's the Seat Ibiza. Uh, this is the FR in mystery blue. So if you look at it in comparison, so you've got like a VW Polo, an Audi A1, I guess really like they sort of, you know, the competitors to this. They're not as cool as this little car. Nowhere near. Let's jump inside. And I think that's where the, uh, the magic happens with this car. So as you can see, um, spec on this car, like the interior finish is really, look at this leather here. And this is the one litre, 95 PS. It's the FR, so it's a reasonably high spec one. I think you can get an FR Sport, which is one above. But you've got this leather um, finish here on the inlays, flat bottom steering wheel, a decent sized media display. Just the finish to it is really, really impressive. And it, I think it looks better than like an A1 or a Polo. Definitely, a lot sportier car. A lot of, uh, a lot of car for your money as well. A real lot of car for your money. Let's take out the, the rear. Again, you know what? That's a decent space in the in the back here. A lot of space. Ooh. Ooh. Oh dear me. Now, a lot of people, if you're 25 and under, you probably won't know what one of these are. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> We're driving along. It's a little bit warm. I want to get some air in. I want to put the window down in the back here. So you're thinking you're either gonna, you're gonna press a little button here. Some cars you might even have an app for, who knows? Not this car. And we're gonna move it around in this set in this fashion. And the window's gonna come down magically. <laughs> and if you want to put it up, it's just basically reversing the uh, the process. And while it is, not only are we getting fresh air into the car. We're having a workout at the same time, so it's a little bit of a two for one. It's a great feature from Seat. It's a good touch, and not many manufacturers are doing that. So we need to catch up with Seat. <laughs> I can't believe we just see one of those. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I generally can't remember the last time I saw a windy down window. So it's hey. not like that in the front, is it? No, it's not. We have electric Ooh. ones. That's weird. Bar the windy down window. <coughs> right, let's just. We could even cut it out, couldn't we? No, let's not do that. No, we'll leave it that. in. Bar the windy down window. What a great little car this is. We look at the alloys on this as well. Really nice uh, boot. Look at the boot. Along. Why are looking at boots? Yeah, look at the depth on there. That's a decent sized boot for a little car. Granted, if you're considering an Ibiza, like boot space probably isn't your sort of main concern, but it's good to know you've, uh, you've got a decent size boot to go out there. In summary, nice car, shame about the winding down windows in the back. <laughs> but, you know, can't have it all, can you? <laughs> so last time we came to the PDI centre, we found a couple of hidden gems. We found an RS3 saloon, an RS3 sportback. Wow, couldn't believe it. If you want to watch those videos, you can do up there. Unfortunately, there's nothing like that here today. That's just the look of the draw when you come here. Sometimes you get some absolute bangers like that, and other times, mm, not so much. Today's been a mm, not so much day, although it was great to see the Leon um, Cupra, a couple of GTIs in there, A4 Black Editions as well. So if you've liked this video, you can see more videos like this. There's one just there. And there's one there, and if you want to check out some of our latest offers, just click there.